Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to talk about the two iBuyers, Opendoor and Offerpad, two of my favorite real estate stocks to talk about, especially if you have some kind of speculative room in your portfolio. Before we do, I want to remind you, hit subscribe uh, to keep up with all of my investing in personal finance content if you're not already a subscriber. And please be sure to check out the link that you see on the screen for a message from our this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. And as always, leave any comments, questions in the uh, on this video. I would love to hear what you think about what I'm about to talk about. So let's just get real real quick into what iBuyers are. An iBuyer, it stands for instant buyer. It's essentially companies that buy homes directly from sellers, make a few cosmetic repairs, and then aim to flip them to home buyers directly. Essentially, these are kind of house flippers on a very large scale. Uh, the two main iBuyers in the market are Open Door and OfferPad. I'll get into what both of them are in a minute. But just real quick, the, the general business model, and one of the complaints I often hear from investors when I talk about the iBuyers is that it's a very low margin business. After all, if you're buying a house and then reselling it, how big can your profit margin really be? Uh, usually it's in the, you know, the single digit percentage range. But there are a few different ways that iBuyers make money, and this is kind of what I feel like a lot of investors are missing. So number one, and kind of the most obvious one, is that iBuyers aim to get good deals on houses. They aim to pay a little bit less than market value. But not as much as you think. Uh, iBuyers have a bad reputation for uh, you know, paying, paying sellers too little, the, you know, lowballing the sellers. According to a New York Times report, the average iBuyer pays offers just under, you know, 0.2 percent less than fair market value for homes. So their goal is they don't want to overpay, but they don't want to lowball. They want to, you know, pay a little bit less than a home's market value. So that's one of the ways an iBuyer can make money by getting a good deal on houses. They can charge fees to sellers, and this is the main way that iBuyers make money. It's not necessarily they're selling it for more than they're paying for it. They charge a fee, usually ranging from 5 to 7% of the home's sell selling price to the seller of the home when they buy it, similar to when you would sell a home a commission that a realtor might charge you. The average real estate commission when you're selling a house is about 6%, so that 5%, 5 to 7% range for iBuyers is on par with what you would pay through the traditional route if you sold your home. Another kind of secondary way that iBuyers can make money, and this was a big part of how they made money in 2021, in a rising market, home values can increase during the time that the iBuyer holds the house. If homes are rising by 20% per year like they were last year, which isn't likely to happen all the time, um, an iBuyer buys a house, holds it on its balance sheet for 100 days or whatever it does, and then at that point, the house is worth more just because the overall market went up. So the 20% year-over-year gains of last year aren't likely to repeat, but the housing market generally does steadily move up over time. Average gains about 3% per year. So if you're talking about holding a house for several months, chances are its market value could go up while you hold it. Another way that iBuyers make money, and this is the number two most important way next to those fees that I just mentioned, they aim to flip the house for a slight profit. The way they do this, iBuyers generally make cosmetic repairs to homes. Think of things like a fresh coat of paint. If the, the front door is all scratched up, they might replace the front door. They might get new landscaping if the, if the lawn is dead. So generally, relatively inexpensive repairs that could add a lot of value. So in addition, a lot of iBuyers have adjacent services, including the two that I'm about to talk about. Um, OfferPad, for example, just started its mortgage division. Some have partnerships with real estate agents for people who want to sell the traditional way. Maybe they sell their home to the iBuyer and then they partner with a realtor to find another one. They could offer other adjacent services like moving services, just to name one example. So those are the ways that iBuyers make money. iBuying only makes up about 1% of the existing home sales in the United States as, as far as 2021 was concerned. Both iBuyers have been hammered lately. So really quick, the two main players in the market as far as pure play iBuyers are Opendoor and OfferPad. Opendoor is by far the largest of the two. It's down about 80% from its high. 
and it is by far the largest player in the market. It is about 17,000 homes in inventory. In a recent quarter, it sold about 12,000 homes to new to new buyers, so it flipped 12,000 homes, essentially. It operates in 51 major housing markets in the U.S. Its long-term goal is to get into 100 markets and have roughly a 4% share of each of those markets. That would be the business really succeeding. It's a long way to go. Like I said, the iBuying has about 1% of the U.S. housing market today, and that's not just open door. That's the entire market. Um, OfferPad is the other main player. Uh, they're down about 90% from their high. They were one of the SPAC IPOs, just like Open Door was. They're much smaller. Uh, in the first quarter, they sold just under 3,000 homes. So, you know, about a quarter of the size of Open Door. But what they lack in size, they've made up for with efficiency and profitability. OfferPad was profitable for the full year of 2021. Open Door wasn't. Uh, it was more profitable than Open Door, even on less volume in the first quarter of 2022. Its profitability just looks a lot better. It's much more of an efficient eye buyer so far. So, a lot the common the the conventional wisdom is that the current real estate market is going to be bad for eye buyers. That's why the stocks are down. A lot of investors think that the 2022 with the real estate market slowing down, interest rates rising, things like that are going to be bad. And they could be right. But in a lot of ways, a slower real estate market could be exactly what iBuyers need to prove out their business model long term. Think of it this way. Three of the biggest advantages iBuyers have. Number one, they can control the timeline. They allow their buyers to choose the closing date, which isn't the, th uh, the case in most ordinary sales. In iBuying cases, you could close in as little as a few days, or if you want to stay in your house for a few months and then sell to an iBuyer, you can do that as well. It gives the buyer a lot of flexibility to control the timeline. That advantage was non-existent for the past year and a half or so. If you wanted to sell your house, you could list it and sell it in a few hours and set the terms. Um, you also don't have to worry about contingencies when you sell to an iBuyer. You don't have to worry if a buyer is going to be able to find financing which in, a, the, in today's market of 6% mortgage rates and rising home prices is a legitimate concern. So you don't have to worry about that when you sell to an iBuyer. And there are a few other big benefits as well. So the point is a lot of the big advantages of iBuyers have been, been non-existent for the past year and a half or so and are just now starting to be a benefit to the sellers again. So to be fair, there are a lot of reasons to be kind of pessimistic, and these stocks aren't down for no reason. So, for one thing, the market could be on a little bit of a decline right now. We're starting to see home prices be be cut a little bit. You know, seeing more price reductions than before, and this can kill profits quickly. I buyers tend to target 100-day holding periods. If you hold a house for 100 days and the market's declining, it could be worth less by the time you sell it. Uh, rising interest rates can eat into profits as well. I buyers borrow money to buy houses, just like most real estate investors would get a mortgage to buy a property. So the rising rates increases their holding costs. They have to pay interest until they flip their houses. The combination of rising interest rates and a slower real estate market, which could result in longer holding periods, could spell trouble for these I buyers in the short run. But I think the advantages kind of outweigh the disadvantages in a lot of ways. And while profitability and growth might kind of take a breather for a little while, this could be a great market opportunity for iBuyers to really prove out the viability of their business model long term. We've seen that it works in a great real estate market. 2021 was a great year for iBuyers because it was just a great real estate market. But we need to see that this business model can be successful in every market. And I think that's the what they have a good opportunity to prove that right now. And all the bad news is baked into the stock prices at the moment. Um, in full disclosure, out of the two of them, I own OfferPad. Um, I have, do not own Open Door, but it's on my watch list. Personally, I think iBuying is going to be the way that we buy and sell houses in 20 or 30 years. It's just a matter of what happens between now and then. So there's a lot that needs to go right for these two companies in particular to be successful. Like I said, uh, OfferPad has been profitable. 
but I wouldn't call either of them wildly profitable or consistently profitable at this point. So there's a lot to watch. These are two very speculative stocks at this point. It's really important to point that out. But if you do have some appetite for risk in your portfolio, maybe you have a little bit of money to allocate to a speculative position, this is one of my favorite long-term uh, transformative ideas in the market. And it's one that I am personally invested in. And hopefully you enjoyed that discussion. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the 10, top 10 best stocks to buy now.